Okay, welcome uh, traders to the, uh, the training session now. Just uh, going through the details here, analyzing the macro fundamentals for short-term and long-term trading strategies. Now, this is something that everyone needs to, um, to get a grasp of, right? So like I'm very conscious of um, new traders coming into the program and because of the, well, there's a number of different things, right? The live trading and coaching sessions, <clears throat> they do cover the training like we're doing now. They do have the live trading sessions around key macro fundamentals. And then there's there's other events uh, as well. But you know what? I, I just, I get concerned that traders think what the what the job is, is just looking at the at the numbers as they come out, comparing the actual versus the forecast, and then just trading and that's it. Because you know what? That's <clears throat> that's a part of the puzzle, but it's not the puzzle, right? The, and and the bigger money, the the you'll make more money trading a technical move than you would just the fundamentals. Obviously, you put both of them together, and that's where the magic actually happens. So let me just sort of run through this because it's it's a um, important part just to have in your uh, psyche, right? Your training your trading brain to so you understand when you come to a number you can have a look at its short-term implications and or its long-term implications now the easiest way to identify and you just got to basically identify the numbers right the, the key part at the moment when we when we do look at various numbers is now let me just get the pen uh is looking at the numbers and and what they are a part of right so so for instance uh, today we've got the uh, Aussie retail sales figures coming out, uh, or a final number at least, and we can sort of work that into you know where does that fit in the scheme of things, and it really comes back to the central bank, right? What are they talking about in their statements? Now, when um, there's potential changes of policy, they usually focus obviously uh, like 99% on inflation, and then the next big social number is unemployment, but then. You know what? You go back a number of years, like it would have been inflation by itself, GDP numbers, bit of unemployment, but then retail sales will be very close as well. And then there's other, depending on each of the economies, what what the structure of those economies are, it, it comes back to their specific numbers, right? So like, you know, Germany was always a, a massive powerhouse manufacturing uh, country, right? So Manufacturing numbers for them are very important. Services for the UK were very important. You, uh, the US, well, they've got everything. They've got such a big economy. Manufacturing services like industrial production, everything's on on play there. So you need to work out first. First of all, the number that we are looking at or that is coming out. What connection does it have? How close to the central bank comments is it? The further away it is, and, as, and I say that in the sense of when, if they don't mention it, right, well, you know what, it's less important, which means, you know what, you're going to need a bigger variance to get this thing happen to, to move around. So let's just connect the dots here because you can't really talk about the numbers here just at the moment, unless we do start with the technical perspective, right? And like every good trading opportunity right, generally starts, <coughs> excuse me, is starts with a good technical setup. Now, really, and you look at the numbers, and this is our, our issue of late, right? And this is probably since the start of uh, 2024 is, we came into 2024 thinking, you know, the Fed, we're going to start cutting rates by Feb, March at the latest, it's now May, they're pushing it back further and further. So what we are getting is we're getting markets that are having false starts, whether it's topside or downside, and we're not getting that easy, consistent trend, right? And that is a bit of a problem. If anything, the only trend has been on dollar yen, but we all know how hard it is to get into that and stay in the trade for, for any sort of length of time. You know what? That's that's just a challenge. What we do have potentially in dollar yen is, is the reversal at some stage, when that happens, no one knows, but we could probably take advantage of that a few times as it goes through those levels. So we are looking at, at, at the majors and we are seeing, you know, periodic strength and weakness. 
but really they're not really going anywhere. So that is, a, a, it's like an issue for us because we, we can't make the markets give us the money. Um, they will give it to us when they're ready. And these trends also reflect uh, the central banks, right? The central banks at this stage, they won't change things unless they have to, right? So when we are looking at what the central banks are talking about, you know, they're referring to, you know, we need just about all of them, right? They're talking about inflation. We need to get inflation, you know, like the Bank of England's 2%. Most of them are, have a band between 2 and 3%. Uh, we've got to get inflation back into the band, right? It's like Alan Greenspan's uh, imaginary band. He, he, he did things quite well years ago, but the markets are a lot more dynamic now. So you've got these trends, right? And you're looking at the numbers. So first up, when I look at the numbers, and let's just focus on um, a couple of instruments here, right? So say so Euro and Sterling, for that matter, just, just those two, right? There's, there's a potential for an upside move. Now, it's going to need either strong Euro numbers, strong Sterling numbers, or a weak US dollar, right? That's, that's where the move is going to come from. And this is where you need to come back and have a look. You come back to the, the fundamentals, the macro fundamentals, uh, right? And connect the dots. So when it, we talk about the key macro fundamentals, we are talking inflation or inflationary numbers, uh, unemployment, and just behind that retail sales and a whole bunch of other things, right? So we look at the numbers as we go through the sort of course of the week. Um, you can start to sort of get a bit of a grasp of, okay, so what's actually going on here? Now, to make this a bit more, um, not necessarily fit the picture, but even look at the Aussie dollar, right? So on an hourly perspective, because we do have inflation numbers coming out of Australia uh, or tomorrow. Now, one of the key things that we are sort of looking for here is a, a potential move, right? We've got a good resistance line topside. Uh, we've got support levels on the downside, uh, you know, 250 points away from of, between these two. So, What's the chances here of, of this actually moving? Well, it really comes down to a key macro fundamental. Now, if the Aussie's in the middle of the range and we have these numbers coming out, right? And I'm talking about the uh, sort of these inflationary numbers. The, um, well, this is a key macro fundamental. It can impact the longer term perspective of uh, the direction of the Aussie dollar. Right. So that's one thing. So that when you're looking at the inflation numbers, you've automatically got to be thinking longer term. OK, that's a long term trading strategy. And in that, the that tells you what the, how the central banks manage things. The, the central banks aren't too interested in the month to month numbers. Right. They are sort of like, yeah, OK, that's going up. That's going down. But really, their focus is the the year on year numbers. OK, we get a lot of prelim numbers coming out of uh, out of Germany there as well. It like, that, that takes all day to get all the different states' data and then, then you get the numbers. But so when we are looking at a potential macro fundamental and thinking, okay, what's the, what's the, what's the implications here? Well, if we had inflation on a bit of a knife edge and that means, you know, it's where we're, we're sort of, the central bank has referred to specific numbers and, um, you know, the Reuters poll here, 3.4%, the range 3.2 to 3.5, okay? They've been talking tough, saying interest rates are going to be on hold for a longer period of time. Uh, a number above three and a half really changes the picture to potentially a hike. That could have a longer term impact and, and twofold because the technical setup on this trade is also in play as well, where we could get a breakthrough 66 and a half, it goes up to almost 70 cents. There's a there's a long-term trade here. Now, so that's that's where we are with, with the Aussie. Now, so what I'm trying to explain is if we come back to, okay, just the hourly charts, right? And we have a look at the, the hourly perspective here of the Aussie dollar and you come back to uh, what's potentially coming out today, right? There, there's two different things, right? The, the numbers today you would say are a second tier number, retail sales, okay, plus 0.2. If there's any big change in the number here, is it going to have an impact long-term, 
No, it's not. Not, not by itself. Okay, so that number there, we're expecting 0.2. The range, minus 0.2 to plus 0.6. This number, it's not referred to by the central bank. It's not, you look at where the uh, instrument is as far as, um, you know, on a short-term perspective. Okay, it's it's just sort of jamming away. Yeah, it's going up over the last period of the last couple of weeks, but really it's not doing a hell of a lot, right? So this opportunity here today, is it long-term or short-term? Well, it's, it's short-term, right? This thing is trading mid-range at best, right? Yeah, it's got a little bit of a upward little glance at the moment, but it's not really going anywhere. Um, we do have a short-term resistance line to focus on, it would it would take something seriously big, and I'd say like an inflation number to get it really moving topside, especially above the daily trend lines, right? And that's where the bigger move will come from. And usually it would take a bit of a shift. And this is why trading the US numbers is easier because it has a bigger impact on all the other major currencies and equity indices and a range of different instruments, right? But the Aussie number... Yeah, it may change the Aussie, but the US number can come and impact that. So, um, and push it back down. So you're looking at at the numbers, and what you're doing is, so you're just analysing the the macro data, and it's this is going to come to you with a bit more experience. A lot of the calendars do a little bit of the work for you in the sense that they this they say this is a high impacting number. If anything, I've seen you know from a variety of calendars, and I you, you see me I'll quite often refer to. Um, uh, trading economics, right? Just a just an economic background. Um, I mean, I've got a degree in economics, but it doesn't really change the way I look at it compared to anyone else. But the numbers are like even in um, in uh, Metastock, right? There's a lot of them. Like there's a lot of numbers here that are referred to as really high impacting that are like this services numbers out of Japan. It's not right. There's um, so anyway, so just take it with a bit of a grain of salt. You, As you get more experience, you'll be able to identify, you know, a retail sales number for Australia might be more important than a retail sales for the US or Germany, right? All these things or Eurozone. So you're going to sort of learn with that. But so just in your scale, right? So I'm talking about short-term and long-term. This is like a second tier number. Does it impact the long-term perspective? It can, but it needs help from other economic data. And then it needs help from the, the technical setup. So if these numbers, right, were chiming through the market here, and it was at the time where the long-term chart was breaking through a level, well, then you've got to adjust your your, your view, okay? Or your, I was going to say something else there, but the your perspective, that's what I was after. So even though this is second tier, if it was breaking through a long-term technical trend line, well, it could go into a long-term trade plan, okay? So what you're trying to identify when you do look at the numbers, and the hard part about this is we've got loads of different economies you're now looking at, whether it's European, German, UK, Aussie, Kiwi, CAD, um, you know, across the board. So, and there's, there's all different characteristics of these different economies. So what we want to try and do is, okay, this number here, as a profile is a second tier number. So that could be a short-term trading opportunity. But if you combine it with a, with a technical perspective where it's breaking a long-term support or resistance line, it can go into a long-term or medium-term trade plan. Does that make sense to you guys? I don't know if it does because I'm, I'm sort of like, so there's, there's two ways you got to read the data. One is on its own, Okay, and the second is when you put it into perspective with the technical setup, that's where you need to adjust. So the short term and long term data, right? It's easy to identify that. What we want to do is is go that next step, which is basically look at this number and go, okay, this is is it short term or long term? And then then automatically in your mindset, you switch back your trade plan to a short term trade, right? Or if it's a long-term data and it's a CPI, well, that could go into a long-term trade if it's breaking through those technical levels once again. So 
And what that will do is when you are potentially looking at these opportunities, it will it will enable you to assess the technical perspective a little bit easier and then quickly adapt the trading opportunity, your trade plan to either a short-term plan, which would be like a, a 20, like an entry with a 25 point stop loss minimum. Okay. Maybe a 75 point take profit, or if it's breaking through a major level at the time, well, then you could adjust your plan to say like a medium term. Maybe if you've got like a 30 point stop with a 150 point take profit, right? So it being able to interpret the numbers, uh, first of all, it's easy to just identify what is top tier and what is second tier. Top tier numbers are the ones the central banks refer to, as I said, inflation numbers, right? Not just the CPI, but maybe PPI for the US, the PC, PCE price index, um, other economies, retail sales is a lot closer to that hub. So you can actually go, okay, I've got, I've got retail sales coming out. Um, I'm going with my short-term plan because this number isn't going to change things and it's not breaking any levels. But then you can come through and then you've got to be able to be flexible with your trade plan and your interpretation. And then you come back to it to a CPI number. You know this is a top tier number, but is that top tier number breaking any technical levels? So you can go in with a medium plan and maybe adjust it to a short term if it's if we don't have any technical levels to work with, right? So what I'm trying to do is, is get you thinking a bit more flexible. We know which numbers are high impacting and that needs to go into your, into your trading computer in your brain because that's important for uh, execution. We need to be able to manage the volatility there. But is the trade a potential long-term or medium or short-term trade? At the moment, because a lot of the central banks are talking, they're sitting on the fence, even the, the big data, if there's significant variance, right, then we do have a potential trading opportunity. And it, it could be sort of more medium term, right? And we're looking at the range for that sort of for that sort of impact. But you need to be referring to what the central banks are talking about, right? So like I'm looking at the, the CPI numbers here for the RBA. They are talking about keeping rates on hold for a longer period of time, okay, which means a, a higher interest rate, which means the Aussie dollar would go up. So the trading opportunity here, if it's above 3.5, it's going to be putting upward pressure on interest rates, uh, pressure on the central bank. And you know what? That could be a medium term trade, especially if we have the technical perspective set up where Aussie is going to break higher here. Okay. Now, what? Then this is the other piece of the puzzle, right? Every time we, we make a trade, we're trading two instruments right? This is the Aussie against the US, right? So you always need, like during, when these releases come out, you got to be thinking, okay, what's the other side of the equation doing? And whether we are looking at the dollar index as our sort of, um, as our key sort of indicating number, All right, let me just get the pen and you can sort of gauge that. So if it's, it, it's breaking down and then, and then we get the CPI number, which is going up. Well, now we're talking a longer term trade plan or medium term, right? I'm reluctant to keep saying long term because long term in, in the days was like a trade that went for six months. And, and it's very rare that anyone would have a trade for six months these days. But if we have a trade on for at least a week or uh, or a couple of weeks, that's that's a long term trade in our sort of mindset. So there's two parts of the, to the equation. You need to be able to interpret, analyze the economic numbers that are coming out and then work out, <coughs> excuse me, the the implications for the numbers. So I want you to, when you do come back to the calendar and you're looking through the the numbers here, right? Have it think in your mind: is this a short term or a long term data release? Okay. First and foremost, like the PCE price index numbers. Okay, so this this should be a high impacting number. Right, but it's on this calendar, it's not, which is a little bit bizarre. But um, so this one here, I'd be like, yeah, you know what? It probably is second tier, but because it's been inflation related, it, it sort of gets dragged into that sort of top tier. So I'd be looking at this going, yeah, okay, well, this is uh, 3.7 is the number. 
We've got a range here. What's actually happening? Uh, I'd, I'd go, this is a medium term potential. So my trade plan would be adjusting automatically to that. And then I would come back, have a look at the technical perspective of say the dollar. And I'm just taking the dollar index as, a, as an example here. I would be coming back to that and going, you know what? On the downside here, if this thing, if we get weak numbers, there's a big potential here for a move down. And I would call that like a medium term uh, opportunity. So we've got the GDP number coming out. We've got the PCE price index. Um, obviously the jobless claims there as well. These numbers here, you would automatically be thinking medium term. Okay, I've got to, like if I get weak numbers here, focusing on the minimum of the range for this data, if we get weaker numbers than those, then we should see a, a decent move to the downside. And if you've already calculated that into your trade plan, you're going to be able to maximize the profit potential from that. And it's about letting the trade run. Because if you just trade the economic numbers and take what you can uh, when you can get it, well, when the bigger trading opportunities come, you're not going to be in the trade to run it, say, down towards this trend line because you're, you're out here because you've just got so used to the short-term, um, you know, fix from these numbers where you, you make short-term cash. And we are, and, and don't disrespect the short-term cash because at certain times of the, where the central bank is and the economic conditions, we're getting numbers up and down, up and down, up and down. They are short-term trading opportunities there and you can take some cash from them, but you've got to be careful and conscious of the liquidity restraints around those. But you've got to think outside that box because if you don't, right, you're going to be sitting here, you get a, a nice number on the US and you get in at the trade, say at market, you get out here, but you know what? In a day's time, it's down here. And this is where you make the money. It's a technical perspective with the fundamental driver, but identifying the driver as a short-term or medium-term slash long-term number. Okay, so... Just analyze the numbers. And, that, and with that comes the, and you guys would know from the course, you know, identifying the range of the data that enables you to manage the position. If it's outside the range, you would definitely hold the position um, longer, right? Um, and that's where the, the sort of key opportunities are. So so the, the aim of this training session is, is to get you thinking outside the box of just short-term trades on the economic numbers. Now you can, can be performing short-term trades, but you need to always be thinking about how can I get this bigger trade plan into play? Okay. Any, any questions on that, Leonard, Reginda? Uh, yes. Uh, I'm glad I have a question. For yeah. example, uh, uh, last week I have seen that uh, we have some numbers, a second year number from uh, uh, Sterling. And it was really out of range, but the uh, the trade didn't move at all. And the same time uh, this week we have some some other numbers. So I'm just wondering how I could see as a long term, for example, if if some good numbers are there, but uh, the the currency didn't move at all. So then okay. what so I would see there, what's happened there? That's where you've got to have a bit more, well, with a bit more experience that'll come into play. So I think were you were you in that? Uh, trading session last week, Reginda, with this one? Yes. Yeah, yeah, so yes. This, this is actually, it's a, it's a good question, right? Because I would be looking at those numbers and if the, if the numbers came out like that every time, I would do exactly what I did, which is sell sterling straight away. Um, <laughs> because the revisions were lower than the prior numbers. The actual numbers were terrible. Now, th there's a bit of disruption here with the way this followed uh, the release of the, the UK CPI numbers the week before, right? So the calculations for, for the UK data is becoming a, a lot more of a talking point, how they sort of calculate the numbers, year-on-year -year numbers, factoring in last year's numbers. So they expect a big drop-off of the numbers. You know, it's a, basically an antiquated way they quote the numbers. So the market, even though these the actual number was well below the forecast, it didn't really have much of an impact. The, the, my issue was if they knew that the numbers were going to come out seriously weak, well, the forecast would have been a lot lower, right? Which which they were actually quite low, but the numbers were just a lot bigger. Now, 
in that session, it's probably one of the best learning experiences you'll get is what I was talking about is we, I mean, with experience, you do this, right? You look at the number and you're like, and you look at the price action of the instrument and you can sort of say, hang on, something's wrong here. There, there is something wrong. Now, understand the global market is, is a beast and you can never know everything that's going on. And sometimes the answer is, I don't know what's going on here. If you don't know what's going on, you get out. So to me, this number here is, is one of those anomalies that will come up every now and again. But if you see numbers this variant that have implications for like, wow, they're going to have to start cutting rates like next week um, and it doesn't go down, before you go and try and find out if there's some miscalculations or whatever it might be is look at the number. This number with experience should go down about 100 points over the course of an hour. In fact, it went down about 10 points, ricocheted, sat there for like 10 minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever it was. And then I was like, you know what? I'm out because this, this thing should go. And sometimes it, do, it does start to go afterwards, but you know what? I'm not here to second guess anything. I know what these numbers do. I know what should happen. It hasn't happened. And then you just close it out. So with that perspective, um, there's a bit more in, like, there's a few more things involved with this sterling number, you know, with, as I said, with the inflation numbers, earlier or last week um there's a bit of like misunderstanding with what's going on in the uk economy so long term short term to me this would be a long term like cut rates in the uk it didn't happen there's already disruption with the economic numbers there so i sort of pull back a bit um the only thing i can say out of all of that is coming back to your question is sometimes you don't know and you just get out and so what that does is it puts a cloud over what Ster what is actually happening on Sterling. And um, it's quite interesting, right? Because I look at, I, I when I, after these sort of events, I come back and look at Sterling very closely and watch it. I'm, I'm like watching Sterling for like, what the hell is going on? Um, and then you can sort of start to sort of piece it together around, um, okay, well, what what is actually happening here? And then that's when you start putting out a few feelers. I'll, call a couple of guys I know either in UK or the US and say, you guys hearing anything on Sterling? Like that's, that is the low here after that retail sales number. And I got out about five points above where I sold. Okay. So made the decision pretty, pretty quickly and we're up here, right? doesn't make sense. So sometimes the answer is it doesn't make sense, but you need to understand and have some structure in your trade plan and your trade profile that takes care of that situation, right? At the moment, I look at the numbers and I can't compute with what's going on in Sterling. So I'm like, you know what? It's, it's a shame because I, I was really enjoying the moves on Sterling and, the, and what was happening there on the Sterling and Sterling crosses. But right now, it doesn't make sense to me on a short-term or long-term perspective uh, for that matter. If anything, like Sterling looks like it's ready to break higher, right? Um, so we would be looking for a, a key macro fundamental of the US or uh, UK to get the ball rolling. But if it was UK, tell you what, if it was weak numbers, I'd be uh, skeptical about selling sterling. Put it that way. So that may that may not answer your question there, but it's oh, it it, it, it does it yeah, does. Basically, it's this is an anomaly that the financial markets will throw up occasionally. And you just got to deal with it. And when when I say deal with it is you you, you make a decision, don't overthink it and think, well, and, and don't sort of keep dwelling on it. You're like, that doesn't make sense. So I would just scratch, put a line through sterling, definitely against the dollar, and then rethink what I do from here on in with regards to that instrument. Um, yeah. And so the, the, the balance here is, is just analyzing the numbers. Okay. We've got the actual number. We've got the poll or the forecast. We've got the range. You've got the prior number and the revision is related to the prior number. So we've got all the numbers there we need to be able to assess whether it's a short-term or longer-term trade. You tie that in with the technical side of things. But really, when you come back to the numbers, is it the first thing you should be asking yourself, has the central bank, are they talking about this? If they are, well, it, it takes it up a notch. 
It's more important. It can have an implication on the long, medium to long-term trend. If it's not, well, then it's a short-term trend. But I tell you what, if it goes with the longer-term trend, well, then maybe we get a bit more out of it than just the, the initial short-term move. Okay? So, but the, the main aim of, of this whole training session is just don't think these numbers are short-term, like not all of them are just short-term trading opportunities. And actually not all of them are even short-term trading opportunities. It has to fit in with what's happening in the market and there has to be either a technical setup or room for it to move to get these trades into play. Okay? And then, but each time you come back to the screens, don't get caught up in this cycle of just trading the numbers for giggles, right? And, I, and actually I had a trade last week, which I was sort of laughing at. I think it was Sterling or US numbers or something. I was actually laughing and I was afterwards, I was like, why am I laughing? Because it's like, it was like kicks and giggles. Like you're, you're trading and you're taking a bit of cash out of it. It was more fun than, than you know, than looking for real, real cash. But that's what we were sort of getting dished up. So we just took the cash and then you like sit back and go, okay, well, that was a bit weird. You know, we're in the trade for 20 seconds. You pick up a couple of grand and you're like, that's crazy, right? But you don't want it. Well, I'm, all I, I just don't want you guys getting caught up in just the short-term fix. And when I say fix, as in like a, like a junkie, like you can become a, a, an economic data release, fundamental release junkie. And, and it's not where the big cash is. It's where cash is and it can lead to big, bigger cash. But if you're focusing just on short-term, you're never going to really hit it out of the park. Okay. Uh, yeah. And I also made a mistake last week for uh, a US durable goods. I didn't look into the revised number. I just say, oh, the number is good. Just uh, take a trade. Well, you know what? That That's actually not a bad thing. You, I would automatically take the trade, but then I would directly look at the that trade. That's right. So that's good. Right. And these, these are things... Virginia, that you are building, you're building more knowledge around the market and what you need to do as a trader to effectively manage the positions. Now, the thing with durable goods is though, even if there's significant variance, it's not going to gap around the place like CPI or unemployment. So you do get a chance to look here and then have a look at the revision as well, because obviously that is a, that's a shocker. That revision, <laughs> excuse me, is, um, is a terrible number. Okay, so that's a good learning curve. As long as you keep learning these things as you go forward, you, you're going to be in a better position, um, you know, as you move forward as a trader. Uh, right, yeah, guys. I just closed. Oh, sorry? sorry? No, you're right. I just closed this this position after five minutes. I thought, okay, it's similar to the great, uh, the, the, the sterling, so I was just out of this trade. Yeah, did you, what, did you buy dollars at the time or what, what did you do? I just buy a dollar. Mm. Well, it would, would make sense. If you had that number and they were expecting, well, this is the, well, the range is minus five to 2.6, right? So that number there, yeah, it's on the, it's on the strong side, right? It's, it's a, it's a stronger number than minus 5%. That's for sure. And so you'd think dollar would have edged up on that, but that was the, the cruncher was the, the revision, which really crushed any hopes of the dollar rallying. Yeah, good. That's good. So analyzing the numbers, you're going to learn a lot as you go forward. Uh, the connection between, obviously, this, Reginda, you that will always come up for you now, which is a good thing to learn that lesson now. Minimum max range, actual versus the forecast. You've got the numbers. We just need to fit the picture and then overlay that on the technical perspective, right? And don't forget, focus on the, the big numbers like, to me, these um, Ray, like the the impact numbers, they should have like five bars, right? So you could have really low impacting, medium impacting, and then high to very high, because it just doesn't give enough uh, room for the like everything's becoming high impacting at the moment, and that's part of the market functionality at the moment. It's very fickle, and jump the sentiment is jumping around very quickly, and that's something else we need to sort of consider with our trade plans and trade execution. All right, guys. Well, that's uh, that's a pretty good sesh. The as I said, the main aim: don't just think short term. There could be longer term implications from these numbers, especially when you keep an eye on the technicals and what the central banks are talking about. And then you have to sort of come in, look at the uh, the whole range of the, or the spectrum of the data itself when it comes out. 
you, you get these numbers right, put it into the picture. You don't have to rush into the trade uh, every time. But if you do get the, the direction right, then more often than not, you're going to be making cash. Okay, guys. Well, that's, uh, that's a bit of a wrap from me. I'll get this video up. Any other questions before we finish? Uh, not at the moment. No, not good. right now. Okay, no worries. Thanks, Leonard. Thanks, Rajinda. And uh, we'll catch you guys later. Cheerio. Thank you.